Hi guys, it's that time of year, got some Christmas lights to put up, and I know this set is faulty. I also know my chances of finding the fault and clearing it are slim. Fairly old, this set. Um, I don't think it's got a date on it anywhere. Looks like we can actually unscrew the power unit, though. That might be handy. A lot of the more modern ones are sealed and you have to crack them open. Okay, well, let's get a bit of flex so we can plug it in and see if we can see what the problem is. Okay, power is on. We've got a complete set here that are not lighting up. It could be as simple as just one LED is dead, or it could be the actual power unit itself, something in the circuit there. Uh, I'll put some links in the video descriptions to ones that I've fixed in the past and attempted to fix and failed in the past. So I've had a go at a few of these over the years. The good old fashioned ones, you just took the bulbs out and swapped them around till you found the faulty one. But with LEDs being soldered in place, you can't just go and find the dead one without desoldering them. I mean, if you're really lucky, you might find one that's been crushed, tr trodden on, and killed. Or I suppose as you run your hands along here, you might get an electric shock off a bit of bare wire or something. If there's one that's pulled free. And all you've got in your basic light is an LED, two legs, a bit of plastic in between it to keep the legs apart, and then the legs are soldered onto the wires. It gets slightly more complicated every so often where you get three wires come together instead of just two. Uh, these ones, because they've got quite a few wires involved, I think are what we call Charlie plexing. Um, There'll be a link in the video uh, description to uh, try and explain what that's about. It's basically the sequence of pulses of current sent down the different wires in different directions. So LEDs light up when the current flows one way through them and don't light up when the current flows the other way. And then by doing that with sets of You've got five wires there. You can wind them together so they go in sequence, chasing, that sort of thing. But clearly, from that point on, those aren't going. And that LED there has four wires going to it. I mean, it could be as simple as the first one in that string is dead. Or it could be any one in that string is dead. Because it'll have the same effect as they're all in series. One dead one means the whole lot don't work. But that's one end of it. There was a dead bit further along.
They're dead. I did draw a diagram at one time showing them in different strings. So you've got one string being driven by the current flowing one way, and then another string connected to that, but in reverse. So the other string lights up when the current flows the opposite direction. See, all of these are okay. But there's some more dead ones right back at the other end. It seems such a shame that you've obviously got loads of good LEDs. I have got boxes full of these where I've saved them with the intention of making use of the LEDs. There we go, another dead stretch. As these are outdoor ones, it's possible you might be able to spot some rust or corrosion. One potential way of checking them is to have a loop of wire that you actually short the LED out. Because if the LED is dead, it's not passing current through it. If you short it out by putting a wire up onto each leg, then you allow the current to go through and the rest of them light up. Obviously, the dead one doesn't light up, but the others do. That's one way of spotting which one's dead. That's the bit of plastic that goes up in the middle. Separate the sides. It just holds the two legs apart. For some reason that one's sticking out. The rest of them will be hidden up inside. All of these are dead. Another way I've done it is to actually use a, another LED and slide that up in there. So it makes contact with both sides. Same as putting a loop in, but you get the benefit of the LED lighting up.
looking at these, these are LEDs that have got paint on them to give the colour, rather than them being coloured LEDs, from the looks of it. It's rubbed off on some of them. Right, nothing really obvious. I might get an LED and just go along all of these one at a time and poke it in. Or as I say, just a loop of wire. I'll just change the sequence. Oh, you can't, can't see them flashing anyway. Let's put them up there. Right. Right, that might be a handy sequence. That's permanent on. Or are they going to go dim slowly? Right, I'll get a loop of wire and start trying to electrocute myself. Right, when I say trying to electrocute myself, I should be okay. 24 volts is what should be coming out here. 24 volt AC. And so I say, if I go along with a loop, trying to short out each LED, if there's a dead one, then the other LED should come on. I want to do this in sequence and start right at one end. This is a pretty hopeless way of doing it, but it might work. I'm trying to get either side of the LED, but without stripping the insulation off, you're just guessing. So this could take hours. Might be better off using a needle or something like that. I know what might do it, a pair of sharp dividers, like compass with two points, and push the points through the insulation. Yeah, I might try that instead. All right, dividers. And if I short out, 
this first LED, you'll see other ones are coming on. Which either means I've struck lucky and it's the very first LED that's faulty. in that particular string or something else is going on. Let's see if we can do the same thing with this one. Not so lucky with that one. That one is definitely having an effect. I'll get an LED. I'll push that in the same hole. LED comes on, all the others come on. Try it the other way round. Nothing happens. So that looks like I've been extremely lucky. And the first one I've tried is possibly dead. Obviously, there's plenty more that are not working. And that particular one is the very first one on the lead. So, let's just have another try at this next one in the list. Okay, well, we'll work our way along. So first one, the reason the first one, fixing the first one, fixes the, the third one, but not the second one, is the second one isn't in the same string. So that'll be live coming in that one goes on to that one but the live goes on to that one and then the next one goes on yeah. let's just try that from a different angle Or do we just take this one out and fix it and then move along? That might be sensible. Take this one out, replace it, and then work our way along. All right, I will just try and cut this first one open on camera so we can see if it's all rusty inside. I suspect it isn't. Hmm. 
Oh, it is a bit, yes. It's pretty corroded in there. And if I short it out, which is what I was talking about doing earlier, you can see we get the other LEDs come on. So I'll replace that one. I won't bore you by making you see all the others, but I will have to work my way along all the others. But yeah, it looks like that one may be dead. And the other thing we'll do is we'll just check that one with an LED, uh, with a button cell. Oh, actually, that leg <laughs> is falling off. Okay, so that one's no good. That's a good one. All right, so that way round. Well, that's not very good. That's better. So you can see the one, that one coming on. And if we just short that one out, same one comes on. So we'll solder that one on, put that between the two legs and see if I've got any heat shrink. If we're going to put that on, we've got to put it on. On the wire first. Uh, I'll get something to hold it. It's all going to fall off my little table. And uh... we round to run it the other way, I think. Yeah. That way round. That did it. I knew I was going to knock stuff over. How long was that? I have to shorten them a little bit.
and that goes in between keep them apart slide my heat shrink up as far as it will go it won't be as good as it should be because it ought to go over the top So, one. Now we've got to try and find the next one. Well, I'm going along the next loop, step by step, and I've just found we've got a broken LED there. We might as well cut that out. All right, but shorten it out doesn't start the next lock going. So although that one's broken, that's not the fault on that, that circuit, or it's an additional fault. Best thing I can do there is solder them, the legs together temporarily. Or just twist them together. And then carry on with what I was doing off camera, which is going along with my dividers, shorting out all the others. All right, just found another one. I short this one out. Got some other light LEDs coming on. Can you see them? I don't know if you can see them. There we go. So short that one out. And the next LED comes on. So that's one that needs swapping. There are so many dead in this string. This is just for just for the fun of it. <laughs> it's going to be a stupid long video, even if I edit lots of it out. So pull that one down, short legs, and we've got greens and blues coming on. So, I think I actually had some blue LEDs there. Although technically, because this, I think these are just painted, it really doesn't make much difference what color I use. So that one, that way round, and these light up. Oh, 
Right, I'll solder that one. You don't need to see me do that. So that's number two done. Loads more to go. Right, I'm going to have a break now. I've spent a ridiculous amount of time on this. That LED is dead. I just try and go across it with a little battery. It doesn't light up. But shorting it out doesn't make the rest of the string light up. So there's obviously another fault on that string. If I put an LED across there. Nothing that way. Go the other way. Let's put those legs apart a bit more. And we've got a, a bit of power getting through. So that looks like we've got a high resistance somewhere. So We've clearly got more than one fault on that string or that little length. And like I say, I've spent far too much time on this already. There's more than 50% of it still isn't working. I mean, there, there was very little working when we started. We've got... Um, that red one and the ones attached to that working now. And that blue one and the ones attached to that working. But there's there's hundreds more there. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have a rest. Um, whether I bother having another go at it at another time, I don't know. It's really not cost effective. I'd really need to strip the insulation off all these ones that aren't working now because so I've tried my method of shorting them out and I've been right the way along the whole length of this so literally hundreds and I haven't found any other quick fixes other than those two that I've already done so I think that'll do for now maybe another day maybe not I may just save them for scrap. The wire looks like it is copper wire, so it's worth keeping. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel, and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.